Welcome back. This is the Centurion Leadership Battalion show with Justin Bizarro. I am Justin Bizarro. I'm your host. That's B I W Z A W R O. You can find us our inspirational stuff on my personal page at Justin Bizarro. Again, B I W Z A W R O. You can also find us on Spotify and listen to us or wherever else you grow yourself through podcasts. The full version of the entire show, uh, even the previous episode, is is on other avenues. They don't all pop up on Spotify, just so everyone knows. We are recording these before I've actually even released any, so I'm not sure how these are going to do. But I will tell you this, this is a lot of reflection on what I've done in the other podcasts. I've actually listened to all of the podcasts that we did for the Centurion Leadership Battalion show um, previously before I relaunched this one. It's why it's taken so long to relaunch. Also, in the meantime, I have had some major things that I was right about, some major humans I was right about in our organization. And, And one of the things before we get into our topic today, and I think it does have to do with our topic, is that trust your gut trust your gut with the humans that are involved in your life trust your gut when you have a bad feeling about someone if there's a red flag maybe it's not cutting the person off but maybe it's needing to address it okay because i will tell you that in leadership and in our homes and in our families when we let things like this go or we don't address them or if they're an employee who who in the case of this topic that we'll talk about displays these actions which is the question we need to eliminate them from the situation as fast as possible and when we don't it is often because we believe that we do this or have some part of this in ourselves or maybe we do feel that it's true what they're saying about us okay i'm going to introduce the topic it is a very one it's very close to home to me okay it's also one that i've seen happen in my life and in certain relationships but it's also something that I feel that if you look at God and, and you're a, you have a higher power and you're a leader in this world, you need to be aware of that this exists. And the leaders that choose to ignore this, to turn a blind eye to it or to allow it to go on, you're allowing it to grow and you're encouraging it. And parents who demonstrate this in their homes to their children, need I say more? Where do you think that that's going to go? How do you think that that's going to compound? Okay, so the topic today, it's going to be a question, is why is bullying, harassment, and stalking wrong? Okay, one of the reasons we're going to talk about this is because there has been a recent shooting in Nashville. There's oh, there's lots of shootings across the country, and we blame it on parenting and, and schools and and all sorts of things, but a lot of it comes down to bullying. It comes down to our relationship groups. It comes to our friendships. It comes to our parents, the way they demonstrate their friendships and gossip. We talk about gossip a lot in leadership and how it's a bad thing. It is. Gossip is bad. And the reason I bring this up is because what we don't realize is by isolating people, by causing them uh, isolation through bullying, through harassment, through stalking, it causes suffering. Suffering leads to suicide. Suffering leads to depression. Suffering leads to people getting upset and taking out their anger or having moments of bad judgment because they're so hurt and so angry or they can't figure out how they're going to put up with it anymore. Okay. And I will tell you, as many entrepreneurs do, many, many do, and many, many leaders do, that harassment stalking, belittling, bullying comes at all of us. When we fire employees or when we do things in our businesses that they don't like, they will come up with ways to make you feel horrible, bad, or whatever. Okay, In our schools, we do this, what we see in our home, bullying and stuff like that. These kids bring into the schools and they do it to kids, to the nice kids. The kids are trying to be the nicest and do the right thing and be good kids. I can tell you from coaching soccer, I can tell you from watching it in business, and I'm talking about big kids too, that the nicest ones are the targets of bullies. The ones who will put up with it, the ones who are the strongest are the targets. Okay? And that goes for parents too. Parents who are bullies will bully their own children. Okay? They will do it publicly to show an example that they are doing it. I've seen it. 
and it is an awful thing. Okay, so why are we going to talk about this? I'm going to talk about it because, one, I've experienced it in a couple of different fronts. I've experienced stalking because someone I was with was in a relationship with someone and they decided stalking and harassment and showing up and threats was the best course of action. I've also, over the last 24 years, um, made some bad mistakes and and done some things, but I've had employees, ex-employees, people that work for me, um, come after me as well. And while I have done things wrong and I have mismanaged things and I have done things in ways that were probably not what everyone thought is what I should do. And I've often had bosses or parents or people in the organization or clients that have enacted these things that, I, that I've that i stupidly not stuck up for myself and tried to do the right thing by the client or my parent or my boss and leadership. Because if I were a leader, I'd want people to respect me in the same way, but I didn't challenge things enough. And what happens to that is when we lose our core when we lose our self, when we don't stick true to ourselves, we're the nice guy. We're the pleaser. And what do pleasers do? They also allow bullies to bully them because they can be pleased in that way. Okay? So whether we realize it or not, in leadership roles or as entrepreneurs, we all are allowing this to go on in our organizations. Even if it's making fun of someone, even if it's joking around, if both parties aren't on the same page, it is bullying, it is harassment, and it is wrong, okay? And I know I'm being Mr. Sensitive, and everyone's going to be like, stop being so sensitive, be a man. Believe me, I take more bullying and harassment in my life and being an entrepreneur, being in soccer, being whatever I was, thinking everyone think I was gifted something, growing up on a farm, which I honestly don't think anyone who knows anything about any human, if you grow up and you take care of the animals in your life and you put them first and you put the humans in your life first, you are not a bad person. You're not a horrible person. I know that often these people get labeled as bad or they're not giving enough to the humans around them who need them. Well, it's not pure love then. It's not unconditional. If I'm loving you because I need something from you, it's not pure love. And I get it. Marriages are like this because you need each other in some ways, but more importantly, you want to be with each other, but you should always be striving for that pure love, bad, good, or evil. You try to find the best in the the person, and it's God's job to judge people, not the bullying, not the criticism, not the harassment, and not the stalker, okay? People try to do that to take away a person's well-being to their happiness in life, and they, they often say it's some righteous thing to go after these people. And they're doing the right thing and they're saving the world for them. Are they? Because I'm pretty sure that's God's job to be the savior. And I'm also pretty sure it's God's job to be the judger. I'm pretty sure it's our job to be forgiving, loving, kind humans and do the best that we can on this planet. And also be the angels in the way that we can for the other animals on here that God created because he loves them too. God created us to love us purely. So when you harass, abuse, stalk, molest, rape, do all the negative stuff that you guys do, whether it's verbally, physically, mentally, spiritually, financially, whatever it is, it's wrong. Why? Because not only are you affecting that person, but you're affecting the people around that person or that human. You're affecting their livelihood. You're affecting the innocent bystanders who are now casualties of your bullying war. And it's wrong. I don't care what you think you know or what you're judging or whatever. Even in politics, we just tear people down. Wouldn't it be nice if we actually judged people on the things they actually did well? Not pointed out only things they did bad. Great, they're doing bad things. That's great. May they do it again? Possibly. Is there a pattern? Okay, I don't know. But even so, is it your job to judge it? I get it that you want them to be your leader, so you have to look at these things and you want someone to lead who's better than you are. But if you're not being better, you're not going to have a leader who's better. If you're a bully and you're and you're harassing people at work, you're going to get a leader who's going to do the same thing to you. And even if you have a 24-year-old business that's done really well, that paid everyone really good money, all the bullies are still going to be angry when their ship stops sailing or when the gravy train stops, when they can't stop going out, okay? And 
Believe me, as someone who's been without alcohol for a majority of my life now, I will tell you that bullies, people that harass people, people that go into these little things or they have all these addictions or bad things, they are the bullies, they are the harassers because they can't look at themselves in the mirror. They are the one causing harm to their family. They are the ones doing whatever. And I will tell you that in my experience, and I will use this because I can, because I have a family that that this is their background. But when alcoholics become bullies and become physically and mentally abusive, the reason that they do that is because they can't look in the mirror and they think blame, 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 blame. It's everyone else's fault, but they don't take accountability for their part. In business, it's often they're doing poorly on their job and instead of asking for help, they're blaming everyone else. And even when they do ask for help, they say, oh, I asked for help. Well, did you follow through with it? And then they start bullying and tearing down the organization because guess what? They're not getting the attention or they need. Well, guess what? Even if you give it to them, you will always end up getting bullied and harassed by that person in some way, okay? Unless they go get help, unless they go fix themselves personally by their own actions with with the help of God, it's not yours. And if you're a bully thinking you're some righteous course to fix everyone around you, guess what? You're not God either. Whoever you're harassing, it's their job to get with God and deal with it. I'm sorry, but we allow this too much to go on in our schools. And as a person that doesn't have kids, but was the part of a life for two stepkids for nine years and watching what's going on, and believe me, I still made mistakes. But I will tell you, I could not believe how atrocious parenting is for this one thing. Great, you guys did something I couldn't do. You raised humans, you provided them, whatever I provided financially. I helped do what I could. I wasn't their parent, but I did everything I could because I love them as a human. And maybe my love might have been a little more pure because I didn't need their love back because they weren't mine. I just wanted what was best for them, period, even if it was hard. And I'm not saying I did a good job because I didn't. I had to learn. I wasn't a parent. Okay? But what I am saying is I've watched other parents, friends of my of my stepkids, parents of family members or cousins or whatever else I'll say. I'll throw everyone on the bus so everyone thinks I'm not just picking on people or employees or whatever or school kids or parents. All the way across the board, when we talk negatively, when we talk gossip, when we talk bullying, when we do name calling, which we talked about, when we let our spiritual maladies, which I just discussed, lead into alcoholism, lead into bullying, lead into harassment, lead into negative consequences, they're school shootings. It's not the gun, it's the humans. And we messed up that human where they feel they have no other chance and no one will fight for them unless they fight for themselves. So they get armed and they hurt people. I'm sorry, it's not right that they do it. They shouldn't go into schools. There's 10 million other productive ways to deal with your anger. I agree. But I will tell you that at that point, that person has lost hope and faith that anyone is going to do anything for them but themselves. So they take things into their own hands. And there have been situations in my life where I've had to do this. No one is going to stick up for me but me. And did they, do people do it in the wrong way? Sure. Do people do it with violence? Yep. In my youth, of course. In my adulthood, I've had to readdress anger issues and rage issues because of people harassing me or negatively saying things to me or letting other people's opinions of me be my higher power and not realize that I, God loves me. It sucks, man. It sucks. I don't know what to tell you. I don't even know what to tell you if you look in the mirror and you realize you're a bully. I'm not. I don't know what that's like. But I can tell you that I have done things that aren't great in my life. I have been hard on people trying to push them away because they wouldn't leave or the business didn't get rid of them. That was wrong of me. You know? And so I'm not saying I'm perfect, and I'm not saying I do everything right, and I'm sure all entrepreneurs will tell you the same story that sometimes you go through things and you're overly hard on your employees or you're trying to build a business and you don't want to lose money, and when you're losing money, things are stressful and all you want to do is have everyone do their job. But here's the funny part about keeping 
people that start losing in your company that I've come to realize, they will become bullies. Because when your business is not growing, there is no plateau. That's a false rumor in business and in leadership. There's no plateau time. You're either growing or you're dying. And if you're dying, what happens is the employees who think they're entitled, who are the harassers, who are the bullies, will start contributing to the death of your company. I'm dead serious, or the leadership in your organization, or your church, or your school, or your community organization. I don't care how good your intent is, how good your vision is, how good your mission is, how good your statement is, how good your core values are. The minute you allow harassment, bullying, stalking, uh, sexual harassment, name calling, entitlement into your organization... It's done, especially if it's already on the way down because the individuals that you're not getting rid of are contributing to the death because they would rather be on the side of winning. And to them, if they don't, if they tear down the ship, but then point at the leader saying it's their fault, then they won. Then they, then they don't have to look in the mirror and look at their part and say, oh my gosh, what did I do wrong? Did I manage the budget correctly? Did I manage the inventory correctly? Did I lead my employees correctly? Did I instill positiveness in them? Did I stick up for what I believed in? Or now am I still demonstrating the very things that I'm calling the organization or the leaders in my organization about? Am I doing that in my very own action, but I can't see it in the mirror because I'm dealing with spiritual maladies or I've now got addictions that rule the roost, okay? If you have a culture in your organization that is a drinking culture, or going out and partying culture, and I know happy hour is this big deal, but if that is something that really matters to the individuals in your business, the after work extracurriculars versus, okay, if we're going to go out and drink for three hours, why don't we actually just bring food in and do extra work and help the organization? If we're going to do team bonding, why do it in a productive way, okay? Drinking, drugs, alcohol, whatever, I'm not saying I'm above all of it. I'm just saying we need to look at it. And I'm not saying it that I do this better than anyone else. I am a flawed human. I have flawed character. I have spiritual maladies of my own. That's why I brought them up on the podcast. Because if I have them and I have had to deal with them and I deal with them on a regular basis and I work programs and I do step programs related to God and other things that every human in here can understand that if you do these things in your life, the person that has a malady, think about what it does for them. What if you don't have one? Okay, let's argue you don't have any of the things that I'm talking about. Just do the programs. I bet you'll be a better leader. I bet you'll be one of the best in the world. And if you desire wealth and financial security and, and, and financial independence and the legacy, uh, the independence to build your own legacy, then I'm telling you the things that have worked for millions of people who are way worse than you are, who've got to come out of a way worse than hole than you do. And if you're a harasser, abuser, whatever, there is still a chance for you to change your life and do the right thing right now. Stop doing what you're doing. It is okay to stop it. As the Bob Newhart show once said when he was a therapist, there's this clip that everyone plays. He, the lady's talking in therapy. He's like, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. True. It's not that easy. We have cycles. We have patterns. We have bad behavior. Our parents model at us bullying, harassment, name talking, trash talking, being better than the Joneses. So they model this behavior of knocking down other buildings so you can have a taller building. But I will tell you that the the biggest mistake I have ever made personally is not cutting off the head of these snakes immediately. Out of the organization, you're not my problem. I can't fix you. I'm not going to give you the space to do it. Okay? Within reason. I believe in giving chances, but I don't believe in giving chances when it negatively affects other people. And when bullies think and harassers and stalkers think they're doing this to catch someone or do the greater good, what lives are you destroying that are, are, are have nothing to do with this? The children, the dogs, harassment dogs trying to kill someone's dog or poison someone's dog? Really? Threatening to rape people? Really? I've witnessed this all, and I am just blown away by the character of the humans that are living this world. And then they're like, we're patriots, and we believe in America. No, you don't. Have you read the Constitution or the Bill of Rights? Okay? What you're doing is basically invading someone's personal space and privacy, and you're causing them pain and suffering. You have no right to do that. You're not even in the same places they are sometimes. Why do you feel the need to do that?
And if anyone who thinks it's okay to have digital lynch mobs, because now we just don't do physical lynch mobs, okay, we'll throw those out the door. But now we have the digital lynch mobs that are coming into play, okay? Digital lynch mobs are wrong. And people attach people on text. People do it over social media. They get this group bullying thing going, especially when they're not even in the same vicinity or physical location as them. And as parents, if you don't know that your children are doing this and your children participate this at least a few times in life, you need to look in the mirror and see what you're doing. Because I guarantee you, no matter what, children want to be liked. Children want to be liked just like you do and want to fit in. Okay, and I heard this great saying about this the other day, which is great as we were doing this research on this topic and and, and I was digging up evidence on, on what it does to organizations and we're going to get into this topic a lot more, the negative impact it has. It's why people have core values in their businesses in the first place. But it causes such damage to the children and all children try to fit in instead of belonging. Okay, what do I mean by fitting in? It means I'm going to do what all the loudest, bulliest, most people that are going to cause the most harm are going to do to me. I'll do whatever it is so they don't turn on me. And in an organization where these individuals start to gain power over the leaders by by being a bully, by by doing that, by getting that, by allowing it to go on, they become the voice of your companies. They become the voice of your churches, of your communities, of your schools. You, a teacher that is a bully is always going to ruin a school system. A teacher that has an ego problem that will not look in the mirror is going to be a problem. I am sorry. Not every teacher who is willing to teach deserves to be a teacher. Not every person that wants to be in food deserves to be in a food business. It just doesn't work that way. You have to earn it. And you have to do right. And if you want long-term gain and you want long-term wealth and you want suffering to stop, build loving relationships and stop focusing on harassing and the suffering of uh, and causing suffering to others. Okay? Comparison is a way of suffering, but also loneliness is a way of suffering. Making the person feel horrible about everything they do and who they are is not good either. And while... I don't get all the different things that are going on in society and and whatever. Here's something I know, okay? I do know that it is your body, it is your choice. And the decisions in life are yours, okay? And if you want to go run for office or do whatever and be a public figure, you're going to have to take it. I take it. You can look at social media a lot. You can probably look at my podcast. You'll probably see there's 20 million things said. And I probably have employees that are still wrong. I know I do. Still that harass me, still that come after me. I know it happens. Believe me, we talk about it here and I show it to the people around me all the time. Okay. I try to leave the name of the person off of it because I'm not going to bad mouth and bad name the person harassing me like they're doing to me. So I leave their name out of it. I just show them what the person's saying as an educational value. I'm not even going to give anyone the light of day of using their name on here. I even after I reply to the person trying to give God to them and just be a good human and not respond or react, give love in return, even though they're giving me hate. I will not leave it up there because I don't want them to be seen negatively. I still believe that there's hope for that human. I still believe that God will act in a way if they seek a relationship with God that will help them grow and become a wholehearted God, unconditionally loving human that doesn't harass other people and blame other people and stalk other people and focus on them because they can't look at themselves to deal with their own issues. Okay? So, how does it go on? Believe me, as you become more of a leader, as you become more of an entrepreneur, the number of people, the number of voices, the number of bullies, the number of harassment, the number of stalkers, the number of threats, the number of threats towards your family and your dogs increases. Always. And if you're a leader that just backs off and tries to please them, trust me, I've had one in my own family. You're just encouraging those bullies to go after when they're done with you and you don't respond anymore. They're going to go after your family members. They're going to go after your employees. They're going to go after the people who are your friends and loyal to you. And they're going to try to turn them against you because that's what bullies and harassers do. They want 
fitting, they want to fit in. They don't want to belong. Belonging means I do things in a loving way and I, I belong somewhere because I'm, because I'm giving. I'm not needed. I'm giving my love in a pure way. Fitting in is my need to do things so I fit in with the other individuals who are doing things, meaning I need to fit in with their character. Or if the leader's a bully, I need to be a bully so I fit into that group. That's not belonging. Belonging is where I'm a pure character. I truly am who I am, a good human. I worry about fixing me, not fixing everyone around me. I worry about my relationship with God. I worry about raising my children properly so they have the same skills not to bully to survive life, to be good leaders, to be good, well-rounded humans. But if anything comes out of this, and this is one of the lectures I just gave, interestingly, is you want to tear down your life. You want to have bad things happen. You want to bring bad karma. You want to have something come back to you tenfold. Because let me tell you, bullying, harassment, judgment, stalking, comes back at you tenfold with interest. I have watched it. And I am always so quick to not respond to people and be loving because I know it's not mine. Theirs will come for them. And they will hit their rock bottom. And what they choose to do from there is up to them. But I will tell you, we do not want this coming into our schools. The guns coming into schools, the violence coming into schools, the violence coming into workplace, the harassment that goes way beyond, okay? We were like, oh my gosh, there's harassment and bullying in our schools when a gun shows up. But I guarantee you, even the schools that it doesn't go up on, how bad is it? How much do the teachers choose to ignore it? How much do the parents choose to ignore that their kid's doing it because their kid, quote unquote, fits in as one of the cool kids now? If your kid talks negatively about other kids at school, I think there needs to be a checkpoint. And I've watched a really good parent recently, and I know that Deborah did a really good job on this also, is that if this is happening in your school, like you're not to participate in it. You're to be a good, loving person of God. And I haven't always done the best, and I'm not saying that I'm 100%, but I am claiming progress over perfection. I am claiming that if you want something, it has to be caught. I am claiming that there is, you know, we do not promote things. We do not, if we think someone's bad, then we do not promote it. We act good to show that that person's acting bad. Okay, what do I mean? Attraction over promotion. If I'm really against what that person's doing, then I should be living the lifestyle that's against what's bad about that person. And that should be enough. My attraction to that means people will belong to it. It's pure. It's good. I'm going to attract people. If I'm promoting, 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 bully, 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 voice, 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 negative, 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 I'm trying to fit in. I'm going to do a whole podcast on belonging versus fitting in. But this is the gist of it. Because I'm sorry, everyone wants leadership skills and the positive ones that are going to build you up. Well, most everyone that I meet that is a terrible leader never addresses the spiritual maladies, never addresses that they might be a bully or they might harass or they might have these negative things about their character or character flaws, that they overcompensate other things to make up for these things and thus never deal with it and thus never get the things they want. They never have the relationships with their families they want. They never have the kids that they want. They never have the money that they want. They never have the life that they want. You have no control of it anyway, but I will tell you that attraction That the thing that you are, the belonging that you want, the fitting in, the relationships, the marriages, the relationships, the people, it doesn't come from trying to fit in. It comes from being truly who you are and finding a place where that belongs. And often they're attracted to you and you're attracted to them when you're in this space. I get it. Fitting in seems like an attraction. Being attracted to a relationship that's negative seems attractive, but it's not true. And it's not true because it is a trick of the mind for us to fit in. And how does God um, talk about or the Bible talk about the devil and all this? The devil is this. It's our need to fit in. It's our need to do bad things so we fit in. It's our need to criticize and judge and tear apart other people, which rots our own soul and our own spiritual malady. That's how you get to the devil 
<clears throat> a lot of us. Greed. Again. Leads to harassment. Leads to being unfair to people. Leads to bullying. I talk about all these things, but the source of all of it is the spiritual maladies. However, it's now grown into alcoholism, which or drug addiction, or sexual abuse, or harassment of women, or being just a mean person, or not being present with your family. Maybe you have control over it. Maybe you're white knuckling your anger or your unhappiness or whatever, but you're still probably not great to be around and your relationship's not booming and you're not having joy and you're not going on dates and you're not holding hands and you're not making everything of the moment. You're not making everything of the moment in your business or the employees or the managers or whatever individuals you have an impact on every day. I'm starting to lose my voice. I'm very passionate about this topic, obviously. So, I'm not pointing at anyone. I am judging, not judging anyone, okay? I am trying to get this out there so everyone understands what the subject matter is. This is not my fight, honestly. This is a fight that we each have to put on inside of each one of us to fight these demons inside of us, to fight our wantingness to be a bully or harass someone or name call them or judge them or talk trash about them. I don't care what blah, blah, blah I did down the street. Do you feel a need and want to waste your time with negativity and investing in the name calling and the negative saying about them? Or should you invest your time investing in yourself or your family or maybe going to spend time with that person and living by example to model them and maybe give them hope? That's what Jesus would do. That's what Gandhi would do. That's what Mother Teresa would do. That's what Moses would eventually do. We change, guys. Just because we act this way or we have these things now doesn't mean that we've ever acted like this. And I will tell you this, okay, as a flawed human who's had been dishonest as time as, as we all have, who have made bad decisions and hurt people like we all have, I will tell you I am not claiming perfection or there's perfectionist or that I'm a perfect person. I'm just claiming that I've been through this journey like everyone else and I've had every bump on the road, that, I've, that I've, there have been times where I've tried to fit in. And I didn't understanding what belonging meant, or I let judgment, or I judged other people when it is God's job, or I didn't real. I tried to be the savior to others when I am not the savior. So, I understand everything that you're going on, and I understand every argument everyone's going to make, and I understand that everyone's going to point at me. And who am I to say this? I am not saying that I am better than anyone else. I am not telling everyone to do it, and I am not judging everyone. I'm merely putting this podcast out there. As an example, so we can self-reflect as leaders, because if you're listening to this podcast, you obviously care about your leadership and want to be a better leader. But how are we doing this? And as parents and leaders, like we need to lead by example. We need to show our children, show the individuals that work for us as entrepreneurs, show the individuals in our churches, in our communities, and in our schools as leaders that what is the right behavior. And if we don't stick up for it and we don't stop it and put a boundary and and help exit it, that's not talking about people. That's just saying like it's it seems two-sided. I get it because I get this too. Well, who are you to say they're a bully and kick them out? Isn't that you doing the same thing? Okay, get it. Totally. Okay, I totally get it. All right, but we all know what a bully looks like. We all know what negativity looks like on the other side. And we all know that a healthy boundary is to not let that into our lives and into our organization. Okay, and as a flawed human that has both yin and yang, bad and good inside of me, we're not all pure good or pure evil. We have both. It's just a matter of which side you let win inside of you. We are never going to be perfect. We are never going to live perfectly by society's rules because it's always changing. And we always, always have to be aware that people's opinions, while there may be truth in it, it's not always true. Okay? There may be a piece of it that's true, but then they attach a name calling to it, and then we attach that name calling to us because they said something that we did in an action. That action does not define us. If I go to work every day and I'm in food, am I defined by food? No, I am not. I am just and bizarre. I'm defined by who I am holistically. And if you're only going to judge me for what I did at work or whatever, I get that by people. 
like you're judging me for what I did at work, but I only see you at work and this is the environment you're negatively impacting. But I'm not going to judge you. I'm not judging you even at work. To tell you the truth, there's core values on the wall. And when you aren't following the core values, it's not me who's making the decision for you to leave. It's you. You chose not to follow the what makes this organization great. You're choosing not to belong. You're trying to make everyone fit in with you by being a bully and, and this whole thing in society where we've got to tear down the man and tear down the wealthy and tear down the organizations and tear down the entrepreneurs because they're successful. Well, you should be trying to catch what they have, not deter it from happening because what you're doing, and it's so funny to me that people attract to this because you're tearing down the individuals around you and the individuals who go try to fit in, you're purposely hurting your life. I'm sorry you're purposely hurting your life and those around you. It's not judgment, it's truth. We all know it. Look at a soccer team that has an individual in it. When you have kids, that's a bully, and watch what happens to that team. They do not win. Watch what happens when their coach is a bully. Watch what happens when that coach treats his son or daughter on that team worse than the other individuals on the team or better than the other individuals on the team. Okay, it doesn't matter. It should be fair as fair as fair. Okay, and if you're a company that has children that are growing up in the company, it is okay to say my children are going to take over this company. We own it. Don't put your children out there and try. I see this all the time. Don't put your children out there in your business and then be like they got to fend for themselves. And this is the only way you get respect. And then you purposely look like you're being harder on them than everyone else because that means everyone else gets permission to be harder on them. Yes, they should fight for their own. Yes, they should earn their way through the organization and gain respect. I get all that. But giving them worse off situation by applying negativity to all of it, not good, guys. And it leads to bullying and it leads to harassment of family members. It leads to bullying and harassment of anyone who supports those family members. So even though we don't realize we're doing this, we all contribute to this. We all feed bullies, feed harassment, feed stalking, feed bad behavior by not addressing it and by trying to fit in and try not to ruffle the weights. It's a, that doesn't have anything to do with me. I don't, you know, I'm not going to get in a war. Okay, I'm sorry. Whether we like it or not, we are at war with this. In our homes, in our schools, and in ourselves. It's always interesting to me when I had people I worked with or employees that work with who would come into the office and wonder why their kid was getting so much in trouble in school. And then here's the individual who doesn't show up on time, who's bullying, who's harassing, who yells at people, who treats people like crap, who doesn't do their job, just points out everyone else to do their job, wonders why their kid has a temper problem and is a bully at school or breaks doors or punches holes through doors. Hmm. What is going on here? What do you mean, why? And telling the kid to do it differently than you and do as I say, not as I do, doesn't work, guys. Unless you model your behavior and you change your behavior, it doesn't work. I've seen it. I've lived it. I've watched it. And sweeping off all the stuff from the past under the carpet and pretending it doesn't exist and not addressing that either or showing the improvement from that point totally with hard work, not just ignoring and not just be like, I'm a new person. No, no, no. I'm taking actions, actions, getting help, going to see a therapist, going to a, a group. Okay, there are plenty of people in this world that deal with bad character defects, the spiritual maladies that lead to addiction, that lead to bad behavior that lead to a distancing from God, whatever the malady is, the higher power, someone else, the dishonesty, the even the little minor ones that we think are so minor that actually stack up and end up being worse. There are plenty of people that go change their life and have millions of great things and great impact on the world and affect millions of people, maybe not always indirectly. But I will tell you that any human, regardless of where you are in life, your stature, your economic stature, you go become a better person and live by a better example. It has way more benefit for the world than being a bully and someone negative and harassing them on social media or for whatever avenue you guys do it on. It's cowardly. And I often find this too about bullies. 
if you if, and and I've been this, and this is where I went wrong sometimes, is when I was in a group of bullies and I couldn't stop the situation, I would just go after them in a way that would just tear them all down. That's wrong. Completely. It wasn't the way to handle it. I should have been modeling a better behavior. 100% know that now, all these years later, decades later. But if I saw bullying and I saw someone being unfairly treated, I know that I had the balls, I had the gusto, and I wasn't a coward, that I would address it to you face-to-face, and I will continue to fight it. I will continue not to back down. I just do it now in a positive way and not in a way that tears them down also. Okay, because that is a way that sometimes it happens when we try to get rid of bullies and we try to do the right thing. We often are mirroring exactly what they're doing to try to knock them down, tearing them down, putting them where they belong. But often what happens is funny is when bullies get really bullied by someone else, by a true bully or a true strong like person. Okay, or another bigger bully comes along there become the victim. The bully becomes the victim when a bigger bully comes along. Watch it happen. Oh my God, this is happening to me. Can you believe it? Oh my God, can you believe blah, 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 saying this about me? What? Are you serious right now? What were you doing a year ago before this bigger bully showed up? Now you're the victim? No, 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 no. Model the example. If you really don't want to be a bully anymore and this person's a bully, show me that you changed and you learned your lesson. You hit rock bottom because you just discovered a bigger bully. Complaining about it isn't doing anything about it. All you're trying to do is get rid of that bully that's the bigger one so you can become the bully again. I've seen that too. Watch people who try to get rid of bullies and then become the bully themselves. Just saying. Control, narcissism, alcoholism, spiritual maladies, drug abuse, uh, sexual harassment. All that stuff stems out of this. Okay? Be careful of the whistleblowers also. Because sometimes they're actually the bully who's been out bullied and now wants their bullying position back. I love you guys very much. Believe me, I am telling you this because I've walked these paths. I've seen this thing and even part of these characteristic defects are mine that I work on every day. That's why I do programs. It's why since 2010, I, I have worked on myself. It's why I don't drink alcohol. I never want to be in a position that I am not in control of the way that I treat people. And often... You think that by getting rid of addictions or whatever else that you have. I didn't have an alcohol addiction, thank God. But I do know that it negatively impacted me when I did it. So I needed to get rid of it. It wasn't something I did every day. So even if you're like a casual drinker, look at who you become. Is that the person you want to be? I'm not saying alcohol is bad. I'm not saying marijuana is bad. I'm not saying things are bad or pharmaceuticals are bad. Just look at the way we use them. And whether or not they're contributing to our life or they're harming it. Are they they masking the things that we need to look at ourselves for? Or are they are they contributing to are we looking are we eliminating them and looking at ourselves for who we are? Okay? I don't have the answers and I am not perfect and I am an ever growing human who's trying to do things better every day. Am I going to run for president or politics? Probably not. Being an entrepreneur is about all the harassment and blame on a regular basis for everyone else's problems when things go wrong that I can take. I will assume all of them. I was the leader. I should have done things better. I even should have left situations or done things different with my own companies. And I didn't. And I cost money and it caused harm and it caused perfectly great businesses to go under even though they were profitable. But a lot of it is the leadership mistakes that were made was not getting rid of the individuals that I had a gut feeling about that were bullies and harassers and sexual harassers that I let go because they were loyal and they did well for the company and they really overachieved in these areas. But often now I've come to understand with reflection is that over, 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 over achievement is to make up for flaws. Okay, And while I overachieve things and I do things now, 
I don't do it with the part of that it's me doing it. Hey, look at what Justin's doing. I look at it as if I'm overachieving and I'm trying to draw things. There's groups, people around me that are doing the same thing, overachieving, and we're doing it for positivity, to create growth, to create education, to create a new TV show that brings world of food and and an understanding of what our differences really are and we need to stop focusing on our differences and harassing each other and abusing each other and fighting wars over our differences okay we go to war it's just a big bully come on that's mine i want it ego 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 blah 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 okay sorry to say this but we can perfectly coexist in israel with both parties okay just the way it is we could figure out a way to do it jointly if we really cared about each having their way each having freedom each whatever it's not about the land it's about being able to enjoy it and who cares who owns the holy land god owns it all right if we're fighting over religious god owns it all it's his we're just borrowing it by the short period we have on earth right come on man seriously it's just unbelievable. We all should be focused on the growth of our planet, regenerating the animals on it, growing each other, legacies for the future, growing out off of this planet as a whole world, as seven, eight, nine billion people strong, all trying to get off this planet and also be on this planet and regenerating it. But we have to go somewhere. That's why I like Elon Musk so much and those who are trying to go into space. We realize that we're going to have to go in off of this planet. We're going to outgrow it and we're killing it. We are killing it. The plateau, there was none. We went from growing, 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 the planet being great, to humans really come into life and we destroy it. Okay? Whether we like it or not, we're contributing to it. And I don't care how good your core values are. There are things in your life that you are causing damage wrongly to the world around you. And maybe you don't think you're a bully or you're harassing or you're a wrongdoer or an abuser. But look at the animals in the planet. Look at our planet itself. Look at how you talk about other people. And then we can have a conversation, okay, about it. And I'm not going to tell you you're right or wrong because it's not for me to judge. I will listen just as any human should be. And I can tell you to pray over it and have a relationship with God. And I can also tell you that I've probably been there. But I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm not going to tell you it's the right thing to do. I'm not going to play these games like, oh, we're great people. No, like sometimes we need to hear that we're not good. Okay. And whether it's from a bully or not, it is a little bit grounding. It's just whether or not we let it depress us and whether or not we understand and leave that bully around so they can do it to other people. Okay. Because while I can reflect, not everyone can. And people commit suicide. People shoot up schools, people go in depression, relationships are ruined, children are ruined, futures are ruined, companies are ruined, churches are ruined, schools are ruined, governments are ruined, wars are fought. How many people are killed over stupid things like ego and bullying and harassment? How many wrongdoings have we heard recently over women being harassed by Weinstein using power to harass women? Bullying. Okay, it's not only men who do it either. I'm sorry. I know that 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 is a cliche today and that men are misogynistic. I get it. I understand. But it's women too. You're not immune from this. Neither, and I don't pretend to be that I'm immune from it. I'm perfectly susceptible, probably more than everyone, by based on the way that I lead my life and the things that I accomplish to let my ego get control of me and be a bully. Okay, there, like I've said, there's even parts of me that have been. Okay, it was wrong, and it was wrong of me to do as a leader and as an entrepreneur. We are learning how to get people to respect us and grow, but we aren't just born that way. No one is. No one is born with a sense of leadership or how to lead properly. It is a skill that is gained. And we often mistreat humans along the way or don't handle our employees right while we're learning. However, that doesn't give us the right to be bullies or harassers or wrongdoers or stalkers or whatever else, or trash talk, negatively impact someone. And I've done it, and I'm wrong, and I apologize it for anyone who's out there listening that I've wronged dude, you by. Believe me, I repent. I say I'm sorry to God. I ask for forgiveness. 
all the time because I know I've done something wrong. And I know even as of recently in the downfall of FSP, I handled things wrong with certain people and I handled things wrong with trying to get individuals that were causing problems out the door because I didn't have the ability or the authority to get rid of them. Even though I knew they were a problem and they were a part of the reason that when a company is going down, the individuals that are in it are often helping contribute to its downfall. That's why you need to bring in new life, new hope, new faith to people that are positive and hope that they don't catch the bullying, the harassment, the whatever culture, okay? Especially as you go into your 20, 30 years in an organization and people get entitled, they try to hold their position by not working hard and doing the right thing or living by the core values or doing right by the client. They try to hold their position and instead of growing the individuals around them, they start bullying everyone around them, particularly someone that might get higher than them or run the company if they want to run the company. Believe me, I get it. I've been there. Competition and fierce competition and wanting to cheat your way through it and cut someone down. Believe me, I've been there. I will also say that I've been around where this has gone on in my life for like 10 years and I finally just cut the other person down. I had enough. Stop trying to cut me down. Stop talking behind my back. Stop trash, talking trash to all my the people that work for me and in my organization and my family about me. I know what you're doing. And I eventually take enough of it and I cut the person down because um, for all due respect, I went to an all boys school. You know, we knew how to make fun of each other, cut each other down, mama, sisters, babies, whatever. We knew how to play the game. We knew how to freestyle battle before it was a rap thing. Although I guess it was going on at the same time. We didn't have a productive way of doing it. We just did it. And and for the most part, even as boys, there was fun in it and there was laughter and we just forgave each other and there's a little grain of salt. But when it became someone hurting, we knew to stop. We knew that it had gone too far and we had to apologize for our wrongdoings. As soon as we did a wrongdoing, it's like the ninth step of all the programs. As soon as we did a wrongdoing, we primply admitted it and, and made amends. Okay? To ourselves, to God, to another human. Whether that's a sponsor, a coach, or a mentor. You need to do this and you need to say it out loud. It's okay to admit something to a safe environment in a safe group with therapists or whatever. I'm not saying to spill it to the world. I've made that mistake too. I thought that if people understood what was going on, that they would understand the choices that I'm having to make as a leader or there, this this erosion of a pattern of harassment and and abuse and and uh, taking advantage of the company for money for drinking and, and partying and all that stuff would be taken care of. But I didn't handle it the right way. And I've had to learn from it. And I've become, it's why I do this podcast. Because I saw a lack of leadership in the world. I saw a lack of leadership in my own companies. And I built them with my family or with other partners. But I did. And none of us address these issues. We just let it go on. It's why core values, and you hear people like Andy Frisella talking about core values until he's blue in the face. Because without them, you die. Without them, when your business needs to reinvent itself, because if anyone's ever read, knows economics or cycles of business, every 10 to 15 years, you have to reinvent your business. You have to reinvent your culture or the business will get stagnant and die and it leads to entitlement, harassment, bullying, whatever. Same with schools. Schools need to be, re the good thing is students change all the time, but the problem is teachers don't. Needs to be revitalized. Schools need new plans. School needs new things. That's why doing new construction projects for schools is so beneficial because it gives everyone new hope and a, re a chance to reinvent themselves. With that, I'm out. I've taken way more time on this episode than I wanted to, but I appreciate all of you guys for listening in. I love you guys. I know this was a lot to handle, um, and there's a lot of vulnerability and yet authenticity in there. And I'm sorry, but I feel that this needs to be said in today's world, particularly with the shooting that's gone in Nashville, particularly with some of the bullying I'm seeing going on in the world, in the workplace, what I've experienced myself, what I've seen in my family. It's time to put an end to it, guys, and make a conscious effort to do so. I'm out.